Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So today I'm going to be tying the rubber-legged stimulator. Yeah, I'm kind of on a stimulator kick. The last couple flies um, have been simulators, so just different versions. Anyway, the hook I'm using today, 200R by Risen Fly. This is size 8, so that's what I'm using. I like these big. I'm tying this one in black today, so I'm using a black Viva 6 Ot. So it's going to be kind of like a black and red. So I start a little too far up in my opinion. You can always start up that far, but I like to dictate where the body and the head are going to transition by where I start the, the thread. And I find that helps me throughout the whole fly. Just remembering where to end, where to start, that kind of stuff. All right, so we're going to come down, back up a wrap. And I generally like to go pretty deep into the bend. You don't have to go crazy deep. Um, it becomes harder and harder to tie as you go deeper. So just go as deep as you feel comfortable. All right, guys, so I just stacked a small little clump of deer hair. This is all black. And this is actually technically coastal deer hair. And the difference is it's just a little finer. Coastal tends to be finer. And as I described before, I had that uh, um, stimulator deer hair also fine so i mean you know uh the difference you know the reason why is I, I i could be wrong but i believe coastal deers tend to not necessarily need thicker hair because it's a little warmer stays more regulated by the coast by the water maybe i'm wrong on that reason but it's what i've always thought so i stack this by the way small small section i don't need a whole lot you can tighten it as you go down a little more, okay? Well, you gotta bring this up, up to right about where you had started that thread, okay? And as you noticed, I didn't tighten a whole lot along here. I left a little bit of bulk. I did make a tight wrap here in order to hold it, keep it from spinning, and then I came up and then I tightened it up here. I left some bulk and that will give you a little more buoyancy. All right, next I'm using Bullfrog in black. Again, I like these, I'm doing this one in black. Mostly, mimic a stonefly or, um, I know like sunfish really, for some reason, like these black uh, stimulators. Generally, I tie them a slightly smaller, though, for the for the sunfish. But so we're trying to do a pretty thin, because um, you want this to be tapered. So if you start real thick, then it's gonna, gonna be super tough to get this fully tapered. Let's add a little more. I just, I love stimulators. They're, I think they're pretty fun to tie. A lot of people hate them, but there's a lot of steps, a lot of work to tie, but they are enjoyable to tie. But boy, do they float. They just float so well. You can always add more. It's harder to take it off, so a lot of times I'm adding extra dubbing just because I'd rather add more than take off. All right, so next I've got Hackle in black. This is, I measured out, it's size 14. This is size eight. So you might think, wait, what, what's going on? I like to undersize my Hackle. Now the first couple, this is actually a neck piece. So neck pieces tend to be a little more tapered. So the first couple wraps might be actually more in the size of maybe a, I don't know, 12, but so we, we tie it in. As you can see, there's a shiny side, there's a dull side. Um, the dull side's facing that way. Um, also, you can tell by the direction that the fibers are pointing. They tend to want to point towards, especially if you, if you start spinning it, it's going to want to, the fibers are splaying outward towards the direction that you want to face the rear, okay? Because you want the spline on this direction, so that'll help keep... Uh, it 
wrapping nicely. All right, so try to do your best on even spiral wraps. Now we don't have a big difference in color between the dubbing and the hackle here. So I'm not really doing this to create a whole lot of like ribs, but it's always good to try to stay as even on all wraps as you can, even if it might not be visually necessary. All right, so now we're gonna use this to wind back up through and I generally, with every wrap of the, of the hackle, I try to go over it at the same spot here, like so, as I'm coming up. And that'll just give it a nice, more even look, I think. Is it necessary? Nah. But that's what I do to keep mine looking as nice as possible. All right, once you capture it, I like kind of capturing couple wraps over it and then pull it back and wrap back up over it. By the way, here I'm using risen scissors. These are the mitten scissors and I love these things. They're super fine, get in really tight. And then I've got the three and a half or four inch or whatever they are um, for more standard cuts, which I'm gonna use right now. Um, so I'm just cutting off the top here, giving it a quick little haircut. Leave a little spot to be able to put some more of that coastal deer hair. This time we're getting a bigger chunk. You know, there's really so much less of the under fur in this coastal as well. And that's, again, I think it's just because they don't, they're not in as much snow. That's my theory. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not sure, get, again, what area, the, what coast they're getting it from. If it's the coast of Canada, there might be some snow. So maybe that's not accurate. All right, so I just stacked the deer hair. Got myself a little wing. And then for length, I generally like this to extend back partially into the tail, really the back end of the, the hook bend. Okay. A couple loose wraps. You can come up a wrap or two and then tighten. And then come up and tighten, come up and tighten and just work your way through that. You don't want to go too far into the head here and then so I didn't show this last time but I've been finding that this tends to be easier I'll pull everything rearward right now and then make a couple wraps right in front and that angles everything back makes it easier to cut and you'll see in a second what I mean so come through you can just basically trim this now you might think okay well that's not leaving as much of a taper but we're gonna fix that And I'm finding this is much easier than what what way I was taught and what way I think traditionally is done. So for me, this might not be better for you. Okay, you don't have to do as much cleanup on it. So we're just working our thread down, clean that up. And all that doesn't have to be perfect. And we are just winding our thread up, creating that taper, coming back up this. And we don't want to tighten too much when we're up on the thread that we want to keep this kind of angled down, right? So if I was to make a wrap right here, it would start to, you can see with my fingernail, it's going to lift that up as, as you can see. And so if you do that with the thread, you're gonna lift that up and it's gonna get too flared, which some people like it, I personally don't. I think a flared stimulator looks messy. I don't think it's, it's as good. It doesn't really represent anything anymore. There's nothing, no bug that has anything sticking straight up like that. So that's my opinion, I could be wrong, but it's what I like to do. So you could use a little larger hackle. In fact, I think I will. Um, I was gonna say we could use that same one, but we really kind of want a bigger hackle here. And what am I doing? I don't need a hackle yet. So this is what, the rubber leg stimulator, right? So I'm gonna use these red speckled legs. I think it'll look good on this. I'm using red on the, on the back with the wire. 
red and black is a good combo. So I clipped one off, by the way, this is MFC's centipede legs. It's a medium and the red speckle. So I'm just getting one. You don't need big legs here. So I like to save things. I'm, I'm kind of a cheapskate, I guess. So I get one and I fold it in half like this. Align the tips. Align the tips. I cut it in half, so now I got two because I'm not going to need that length. And I lay this so at least this is sticking out behind the, the tail. Okay. There's one. Try to arrange them. I like having the tail section sticking, or the back end, I guess the back leg sticking out a little further than the front. And I like them angling up slightly, okay? And the front can angle down. That's how I do it. However, I come a little further up. A lot of people tie these where it's just on the back there and then they tie their hackle through it. I like having these almost fully up at the front. I find that's actually not almost, I really at the front. And there we go. Get these positioned a little better. Now for the hackle. Like I said, we're going to grab a bigger piece of hackle. Right, so this one's a 12. I'm just going to capture it like that. I like to do an extra wrap and then start bringing that uh, a little long. That stem back. That'll, not, that'll hold it nice and tight. And come back. And we are, oops, I'm gonna, I want that to flare. So what you could do, I'm just gonna use the black bullfrog dubbing. You could do red, you could do any other color if you want. I mean, have fun with it. You can change up the color of the head, change up, you know, anything. Um, what would be nice would be like, um, I think peacock would look nice here, like a peacock dubbing. And that's all up to you. So you make that decision, it's your fly. This camera is in the way of this. <laughs> Keep hitting the camera. It's a little thicker up back here. We really want to taper this down now. Yeah, we'll just leave them up. And I find that this is really nice um, and easier, a lot easier to have those legs spaced out. And it has a little more of a stonefly look in a way, kind of like a patch rubber legs, um, really spaced out legs there. Okay, we're going to go over that twice. We're going to pull this back. I'm going to go over Keep those legs though from, there we go. Come back up on top of it there to hold it. You got any trap fibers, which you will. This is a little harder to do and you can do that. And then I pull back the legs here and I make a wrap in front. You'll see in a second, I can whip finish right behind the eye there. The hook eye, so. Got a little place to lay my bobbin while I whip finish. I can pull everything back. Now I'm coming up over the eye a little bit. And there's a trick, you can just pinch. I don't know if you saw that, but that seated that back there. There we go. 
So now we've got a rubber leg. Um, now you can trim these legs, but there's a finished rubber leg stimulator. First, I need to paint a little bit of this ultra thin bone dry. Just on the top and bottom there. Don't get any in the eye of the hook, but then you just cure it with your UV light and that hardens it. That's basically head cement. So that's how I cement my heads. I really like this stuff. Solarez, you call it bone dry, ultra thin, whatever it has a couple different names, but now let's go ahead and cut these. So I pull these up. Well, you might not be able to see that. Let's see if I can do that in the camera. I pull these up so that they're even and I don't like a really long front. You can go a little longer than that. There we go. And then the back here, I'm trimming to about the length of the wing. You can do those individually, but there we go. The rubber leg stimulator. And boy, I hope that there was enough light on all this. I filmed the whole time. Sorry if not, guys, but it's a it's a nice fly. Um, sunfish. I fish a lot of this color for sunfish when I'm doing dry fly. They tend to like black, but this will work really well for trout, especially on a stone fly hatch. You can do any other color rubber legs that you want, or any color whatever. I'm just go with a different hackle, whatever you want. So anyway. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They are the ones that made the hooks. They also manufacture rods and reels and a couple things that you might want uh, for fly tying. Otherwise, um, anything else I used on this besides the hooks and what Risen offers, I get from Amazon or other, you know, I, I, I worked a lot with the fly artists, but they're taking a break for a little while. Um, I guess the owner was shutting down shop because he's going to, scale some mountain i'm not sure but unfortunately they're no longer um in business at the moment they will be in a couple months um after he's done his his adventure so uh, which is fine um but can't link there so i will be linking to amazon where where they have stuff um or other other uh, online shops okay so anyway um if you haven't already please hit the like button and subscribe um, oh, also, uh, Risen, if I didn't tell you, is offering you all a twenty uh, a fifteen percent discount. So type in McFly at checkout when you go to www.risenfly.com. Okay, don't forget to do that. That fifteen percent off will really help you. They've got, in fact, they've got a fly rod that is one hundred nineteen dollars, and I think with fifteen percent off, it brings it down to right about the hundred dollar mark. Which and it's a great reel or a great rod. It's one of the best I've ever fished, so I'd, at that price, I mean, you'll never find anything better. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.